Okay, Shalom. 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 Turn towards the east, praise the Jerusalem. Keep on praying for the glory. Yahweh's true name, 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 Yahweh's Yahweh, Yahweh's true name, 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 Double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone. Peace and salutations to the hope of that brethren. Faith and unity and preach this word with fear and trembling. Shalom to the believers that subscribe and listen to this truth. Hold on to the spirit and power of the hour. By Hashem, the hour shot. Right? To the GMS Nicholas, Hebrew Israelites. All right? Out here and again. To prophesy the downfall. God forsaken kingdom today known as America. All right, prophetically known within the Holy Bible as Sodom, Egypt, all right, and Babylon the great virgin daughter of Babylon who ought to be destroyed. Right? And that destruction is drawing not. Right? Every day we come into the end of the so-called kingdom today, ruled by the wicked. Also known in the Bible as Esau Edom. Right? Esau Edom, so called self proclaimed white man, beginning with the global uh, leaders, the so called elite, one percenters, or whatever you know you want to call them. The banking families, all right? Namely the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Oppen, the Oppen Highlands, all right? Do points to get it, so forth and so on. But these elite, uh, so called elites, are known in the Bible as the wicked. And their time to rule is coming to a swift end. And in their end, we're going to have a new beginning. Right? Right. As the scripture say, Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of the that follows, meaning the beginning of a new rulership on earth where righteousness is established, okay? There will be no more uh, sin running rapid in the earth once the wicked Esau is moved out of the way. And that's going to start with our Lord and Savior, who? The Aosha, again, the word we know as Jesus Christ. Soon he's coming to judge Babylon the Great, also known as uh, the, the Great War. Okay, so we're going to get into the Kingdom of Heaven and the things leading up to the Kingdom of Heaven. Alright? But we're going to kick it off. We're going to go with, uh, with, with Luke 17. Okay. This is Luke 17, starting at verse 20. And when he was and when he was demanded of the Pharisees what the Kingdom of the Most High should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of the Most High cometh not with observation. Yeah, the kingdom of the Most High cometh not with observation. Right? Because at the end of the day, you know, you got to come into uh, this truth and it's a job to maintain your faith. There's work that must be done. You know? You got a lot of people that watch the videos, you got a lot of people that walk by and they see us preach the word, but they don't understand that this word that we're preaching is of the kingdom of heaven being established on the earth. Right? And even though they might hear us say that, they still don't know what it means. You know? They'll say, well, I seen these men on the corner speaking about the kingdom of heaven. Well, you see us. But you don't understand what we're doing is what's going to bring the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Preaching the word. Alright? Telling our people to repent. Cleansing ourselves of the responsibility that uh, is going to fall upon all those who live in sin. So you won't be held responsible for sinners. Uh, 
because we come out here and cleanse the blood off of our hands. Once we tell you that you need to repent and stop living according to the way of this world, which is wickedness, death, destruction, rape, robbery, and murder, you don't listen, that's on you. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he got it. Yeah. Hey, this is Ezekiel chapter 3, starting at 17. <laughs> it says, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word in my mouth and give the warning for me. That's the work. That's the work right there. Not just watch, but to observe, get that word observation in the right? And, like, the Lord didn't set us up just to sit back and watch. You know, we have to put our hands to the plow and pull proof this ministry. All right. All right? Preaching the word, as you're saying, uh, what's that? Uh, is that uh, Timothy? Preach the word against the in season, out of season, the rules of you, you know, with all long suffering and doctrine. The words of Yahweh Shah is the doctrine. The doctrine of life to be exact. Go ahead, bro. This is Ezekiel 3 and 18. When I say unto the wicked, thou surely, thou shalt surely die. And thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life. The same wicked man should die in his iniquity, but his blood without will require. In thy hand. Right, so the Holy Father took it back for good. Right? Now, you're either going to have to uh, uh, self cleansed by the blood of your house shot, or you're going to be defiled, right, by the blood of this land. All right, which this land is defiled because nothing but innocent blood has been shed at the hand of the wicked. And when you go after the ways of the wicked, you uh, you hold yourself accountable for the judgment that the wicked uh, is going to, uh, that, that's reserved for the wicked. In the back of words, a lot of them. I'm going to tea today. But yeah, you, you're going to uh, be found accountable for that same uh, judgment that's reserved for the wicked. Okay? Coming to cleanse this land, right? Scripture tells us the land cannot be cleansed of, of the blood that was shed therein, except by the blood of the one of them that shed. You know. So none of us are innocent, but Esau Edom, hey, he he has no opportunity to even be cleansed of his sins. Right? Because for one, the Lord didn't program them to repent. As we get into the kingdom of heaven, the theme of the kingdom of heaven is repent. Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The scriptures tell us Esau is a fornicator. And he has found no place of repentance in his heart. So go ahead, come out, that was it. Uh, one more. Okay. Ezekiel 3 and 19, yet yeah, if thou warn the wicked, and he turned not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way. He shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Yeah. So the angels are watching. Okay. And that's why we move the way we move, which is with fear. Because we understand there's unseen powers, okay, that are committed to doing the will of the heavenly father. And their will is to mark, 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 right? Ezekiel 9 and 4. Load that up. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, you know, I'll be going back to Luke. You got some priest up. Okay. And then jump back to Luke. Okay, so just going back, and we got to do this work. We just ain't here to, to watch and wait for the next prophecy like it's a, like it's a TV show. Wow. Right. Wait, wait, wait for season two, episode three. Right. 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 So this is a part of it. This is Isaiah 58 and 1. Cry aloud, spur not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and so my people their transgressions. And who is the Lord's people, man? You 
so-called Negroes, Latinos, and that American Indians, man. And you just look like one of them, maybe scared of one of these people who looking like them, man. You're the Lord's people. And we out here, what, man? Doing the Lord's work. We're not sparing nobody, man. That's a part of our job description. So it says what? It says, so my people, their transgressions in the house of Jacob, their sins. So, sins what? Yep. Hey, transgression of the law. Yeah. And if you independent of transgression of the law, it's what? They yeah. dealt, man. Yeah. So we got to what? Repent. Why? Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand, man. Yeah, we got to turn away. That's what repent means. Repent means to, uh, to turn back away from your iniquity. Turn back away from your sins and commit to righteousness. Okay? Commit to righteousness. That's how you want to obtain salvation. Go ahead, bro. Huh. So this is back in Luke 17. Yeah, you got it. Okay, this is back in Luke 17 and uh 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of the most high should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of the most high comes not with observation. Go ahead, y'all. Got that word observation. Uh, this is uh this is observation. In the blue letter Bible, it says, uh, Parteus. I don't really care how they say that <laughs> word. <laughs> but it's a Greek word, right? Yeah. yeah. It's a Greek word. Parteus. Like, you don't have to go to the root. You see that root right there? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the root word is. Uh, it, says, uh, yep. it says to stand beside and watch. Yeah, to stand beside. You know, you just standing around looking, you know, just watching. Put your hands on something. Oh, right. Do something, nigga. Get involved. Well, uh, well, uh, they, they say on, 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 on the next Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 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 Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, <laughs> you know? So with us knowing that the judgment of your heart and all the shots coming down the pipe, and knowing the particulars according to the prophecies, right, of those judgments that's coming up the pipe, you can't just sit back knowing these prophecies right. and, just, and, just, and just watch. Right. That's like, right. hey, you, know, you know somebody is headed toward a ditch or toward yeah. Off a cliff. Yeah, off a cliff, and you just watch it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's wicked. Man, look at this nigga. Man, man, that, that, that's wicked, yo. You ain't gonna sit back and look. You gonna watch it? Yeah. You ain't gonna say nothing. Yeah. That's wicked, bro. And that's that's really the spirit that the Pharisee, he really was cutting the Pharisees when he told them that. But that's the spirit they was in. You know? Really just just watching the Lord's people. Uh, Cause they had they had a, a, a specific hatred towards them. The Gentiles, which were Israelites, the right, amongst the other, living amongst the other nations and taking on the customs of the other nations. Right. So they were just sitting back watching that shit. Right. Now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no. that, they were a part of the kingdom of heaven too. Yeah. And they became more so a part of the kingdom of heaven than the wicked Pharisees because they were trying to maintain uh, your word, a level of uh, aristocracy, right? They were trying to be a part of the uh, heathen, the Roman heathen council that, you know, had those high seats. So they was looking down on the Lord's uh, sheep that were uh, in a lost state of mind, for lack of a better word, right? We can go to, uh, what's that, 1 Corinthians 12, right? That describes the mindset that they were in, right? They were ignorant of spiritual gifts. They were ignorant uh, of the promises. And you can get Ephesians to bag it up, right? So that's what's going on in, in, in Luke 17. He's really rebuking them down uh, Pharisees, but how he's he doing it in a way, kind of like a peril. Like they didn't even know that he was cutting their ass. Like it ain't gonna come with y'all niggas just sitting back watching right. as my people being led as uh, sheep to the slaughter. And you motherfuckers got a hand in it. You got it, bro. This first Corinthians 12, I'll start at once. It says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brother, I would not have you ignorant. And see, that's what Apostle Paul 
had to come over to the other side. Because he was persecuting the Lord's people too. Right? It was a time when, when he was known as Saul, right? Yeah. He was actually wicked. Yeah. Right? He was persecuting the Lord's people. Not, not making them uh, known to the promises, right? To the commonwealth. That's why I want you to get Ephesians 6. They weren't making our people known to the commonwealth of Israel. So essentially they were sitting, sitting back watching while your people, you know what I'm saying, in the ghettos, in the slums, uh, shaving and lining themselves up, committing the adultery, doing all this fucking wicked shit, right? The, the Roman way, living after the ways of society. But this ain't nothing but modern day Rome all over again. You sitting back watching your people be gentlemen, right? That shit wicked. The Lord says, show yourselves men, not gentlemen, right? Or romantic. You know? Go ahead, bro. This first Corinthians 12 and 2 now. It says, ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, yep. even as ye were led. Our people were in gross darkness, going out to uh, pagan gods and idolatry. They were ignorant, though, of the fact of what they were doing because they didn't know. They didn't know that they were Joshua. Yeah. They didn't know that they were princes of the power. Yeah. Meanwhile, the Pharisees were sitting back watching. You got it, bro. You make a point. I was gonna make a point. Pretty much, that's why uh, the Lord called them a wolf. You know, because they cared not for the sheep. They cared not for the sheep. You cared not for the sheep. Therefore, man. <laughs> That's a heavy judgment, man. Yeah. You see, hey, and then you breaking the law. Since you so about the law, you breaking the law for the love thy neighbor as yourself. You see. So here it is, you watching your brother fall, and you ain't saying nothing about it. Hey, you gonna get there, you gonna get beaten with many strikes. You see? You see? Yeah. You got it, bro. Yeah, yeah, I can read it in the NLT too. Yeah, yeah, good. This Ephesians 2 and 11 in the KJV. Wherefore, remember God in 10. God in 10. This Ephesians 2 and 10. For we we are his workmanship, created in Hamashiach, Yahweh. Right. We're, we're the Lord's workmanship. Like all of the Lord's people are supposed to be working towards the righteousness of the Hamashiach being established on earth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Give, me, give me all hands on that. Yeah. You know? So we know in this time, all our people are not going to repent and get down, right? So therefore, when the Lord comes, they don't have to get down. Back in Ephesians 2 and 8, two, back in Ephesians 2 and 10, for we are his workmanship, created in the Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, unto good works, which the Most High have before ordained, that we should walk in them. Hey, not watching the works be done. You know, the house of Shire, he came from the city, he said he coming for the lost sheep for the house of Israel. Yeah. So when he came, he said, I came to my own, my own received me not. His own was, was, was talking about those priests and those Pharisees in that time. Meaning they knew, right? They, they were supposed to be the, uh, the leaders of Israel. Right. But they were acting like they didn't know what the judgment was for our people who were living amongst the other nations and living like you're supposed to restore them. You're supposed to bring them back into the commonwealth. Even when you go into the book of uh, uh, what's that? Exodus, right? The 12th chapter when you read for the Passover, right? It tells you how you deal with the strangers. And it's two words for the meaning strangers. One being the car and one being God. Our people are the God, going back to Gershon, right? Which was uh, Moses' son, okay? Who was born of an uh, Ethiopian woman, all right? So if you were born out of the seed of Israel, meaning out of the loins of an Israelite man, no matter where uh, you were brought up or raised up, you might have been brought up with your mom's side of the family, your father might have uh, went off the war. You got lost by anything. So as a as an infant, you got lost in another culture outside of your heritage, outside of your homeland, your tradition, 
wherever you grew up at, you learn the customs that were being done in that land. Yeah, yeah, you know? Because Timothy had to be restored, but his father was like, shit, I don't give a damn about that. This is this, this how I was brought up. This what I, this what I am going to embrace. Timothy's father embraced the Greek culture even though he was an Israelite. Go ahead. Ephesians 2 and but 11. His mom was an Israelite too, and she rejected the Greek culture and accepted her true inheritance as an Israelite. That's why I say that about, matter of fact, find it. Yo, go ahead. This Ephesians. Yeah. This Ephesians 2 and 11, wherefore remember that ye be entire past Gentiles in the flesh. Gentiles in the flesh, right? Meaning you were doing the things uh, and learning the ways uh, and, and customs of the heathens. That's what Gentiles in the flesh mean. Go ahead. Who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Yeah. That at that time you were without Hamashiach, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without the Mosai in the world. Strangers, there you go. Strangers from the covenants of promise. Okay? So again, it's two different meanings for the word stranger. Stranger don't always mean a non-Israelite. If it's dealing in the context of the Hebrew, the car is talking about the heathen in most instances, right? In most instances, when you see the word stranger, particularly in the Old Testament, if you look the Hebrew word up and it's the car, it's talking about the heathen, the nations outside of Israel. But in this particular uh, precept right here, when it's talking about strangers, it's talking about in the context of uh, God, right? Which are uh, Israelites who grew up outside of the land and outside of the customs of Israel. They didn't know about their heritage. Got it, bro. We're going to read it in another translation. This Ephesians 2 and 11 in the NLT, don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. Right. You were called uncircumcised heathens. And that's what the Pharisees were addressing our people who were accustomed to Greek culture, who were living. You had our people. They didn't know how to speak people. That's why Yahweh Shah, who were to know as Jesus Christ, he set up Apostle Paul to be a light unto the Gentiles. Because Apostle Paul was fluent in Greek and Hebrew, and he knew Latin. Because those were the primary tongues in that time. So when he went and uh when he went, uh, when he went to Apostle Paul, why did he knock him off the horse? What tongue did he speak to Apostle Paul in? Hebrew. The Hebrew tongue. But Apostle Paul was fluent in Greek. Remember, Apostle Paul told Agrippa that he's a Roman citizen. Right. He was a plenum, you know, because he was using, basically like you have people in this time, they got dual citizenship. Like uh, like uh, Joel and B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joel and B got dual citizenship. He could have played for France yeah, or the U.S. Yeah. Uh, Michael, Michael, Michael Rainey Jr., Tyree, the one, uh, he, got dual, he, grew up, he grew up in Italy. He got dual citizenship. But is he an Italian? No. Where you grew up and where you were raised doesn't determine your nationality. But the Pharisees in that time were looking down on those that grew up outside of the custom of Israel. Go ahead, bro. It said you were called uncircumcised heathens by the Jews who were proud of their circumcision. Apostle Paul was guilty of this. He was doing that at first. Because that was a tradition in that time for the Pharisees to treat Israelites outside of the culture like shit. Don't give them any 
uh, inheritance. Don't give them any knowledge of their inheritance. Okay? Go ahead. Even though it affected only their bodies and not their hearts, in those days you were living apart from Amashiach, you were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel, and you did not know the covenant promises the Most High had made to them. You live in this world without the Most High and without hope. Yeah, because one thing the Pharisees was doing, they was looking at our people because the Greek culture was to keep a smooth face, you know, shave, uh, not be circumcised. That was a major thing, you know. Because circumcision goes all the way back to Abraham. That's a token of our faith. That's a part of our heritage. That's why today, like, shit, half the baby male babies being born, shit, they won't circumcise them. Which technically you ain't supposed to circumcise them to the eighth day, right? Which is a, it's a delicate thing and how you're supposed to deal with it, shit. You'll we'll bring, we'll bring the male baby back to the doctor and be like, hey, I need to get my son circumcised. And they'd be like, well, we need to wait a little bit and, you know, fuck around, I'll never get circumcised. Then you come into the knowledge of the truth, of uh, who you are, that you are a so-called uh, Negro, Latino, Native American, Hispanic, right? And according to biblical prophecy, you are the biblical Hebrew Israelites. Be like, damn, I ain't know that. So what does this mean for me? I mean, you gotta get circumcised. I mean, you gotta stop shaving your beard. I mean, you gotta keep the laws. You gotta stop eating abominable foods, okay? You gotta stop celebrating these wicked holidays, okay? Because that's idol worship. That's, 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 that's uh, paganism. Hey, it's my bad. Go ahead, folks. Hey, man. Hey, listen. Now I go around and celebrate my motherfucking memorial day. Right. We have a memorial of Ron and Trump, but that's our memorial. Right. right. That's all I have to say. I got right. to say that. Right. They, don't got, they don't got nothing to do with us. Man. Right. right. Well, we, and, and we see, we find ourselves in the same position today as uh, our people were back in Rome, where, you know, we got American citizenship, but we're not Americans. Right? Unfortunately, we haven't been placed back in our land to get our true citizenship, but we know who we are. We know who we are. All right? First of all, American is not even a fucking nationality. Okay? It's not a nationality. It's some shit they made up, which they go back to America of this future. All right? And uh, they, they deem us African American. So again, your nationality is determined by your father, your father's line, right? The table of nations is in the Bible. 18 nations. So everybody on this planet Earth goes back to a particular progenitor of one of those 18 nations, right? Which those 18 nations came out of who? Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Ham, Shem, and Japheth, the three sons of the Lord, if you're gonna get back to Luke 17. Ham, Shem, and Japheth are the three men that repopulated the Earth after the first death or what the common people today know as the flood. But the flood is known as the first death, where the Lord wiped out all humanity except for eight souls. Noah, his wife, Ham, Shem, Japheth, and their wives, seven of every clean animal and two of every unclean. Go ahead, Paul. Yeah. This is the uh, Acts of uh, 17 and 1. Read down to verse 6, it says, then come And this is a stumbling block, especially for a lot of Christians who stand on John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believed in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Right? They stand on that scripture, and they stand on that word world, not knowing that there is multiple meanings of the word world. Right? So, load up Hebrews 1 and 2. Go ahead, now nah, we're going to get back to that point. The, it says, Then came he to devil, a degree to Lester, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a certain woman, which was 
a Jew and believed, right? But his father was a Greek, right? What's so he didn't believe. When it, when it deals with Greek right there, it's not talking about his nationality actually being a Greek. It's talking about he accepted the Greek citizenship and instead of converting back to his own inheritance, he chose to remain a Greek. He didn't believe. Hey, my man, because we had read uh, First Corinthians the 12th chapter, said how we were Gentiles carried away, but when you jump to First Corinthians the first chapter, it lets you know that a Paul was going to the saints, who are the saints, you Israelites. That's it. All right? That's it. So this is back in Acts uh, 16 and verse 2. It says, which was well reported. But the saints also, are you going to add to that point? That's true. But they are the Israelites that believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really the elect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to back you up too, that's why I say the elect should pray. The elect should pray the whole night. Yeah. This is Acts uh, 16 and 2, which was well reported of by the brother that were in Lester and uh, Al 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 I Iconium. Iconium. Iconium, verse 3. Him will Paul have to go forth with them and took and circumcised them because of the Jews which were in those quarters where they knew all that his father was a Greek. And as they went through the city, they delivered them to the priests for to keep. That's one thing about it, right? That's why I'm going to fix this 12. Now Paul is speaking about circumcision right here. If you didn't believe, we can start, you can't even come into the ceremony of the Passover. You can be an Israelite, but if you don't believe, I'm not going to circumcise you and come, have you come into this because you don't believe. That's condemnation. You're taking part of the Lord's Supper unworthily and you will be like unto the like scripture say, a spot in the Lord's feast. That's why you've got to watch who you allow to come into this thing. Okay? You don't just, uh, you don't just preach this word and put it out there so you can gather numbers together and have this great big Israelite community and a, and, a, and a congregation full of niggas that don't believe. This right. Acts 16 and 4, and as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem, and so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. Yep. That's the one. Yep. Right? So get that what I call for, bro. This Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2. I'm sorry, that one. Yeah, 1 and 1. This Hebrews 1 and 1. The Most High, who has sundry times and in, di and in diverse manners, spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, have in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he have appointed heir of all things. Man, I'm not mistaken, Tim. Right? If I'm not mistaken, I, I believe Timothy wrote the book of Hebrews. So when you go into that, right? Uh it said worlds plural. Read that again, verse 2, right? Uh -huh. Hebrews 1 and 2 have in these last days spoken unto us by his son. Yahweh Shah. Whom he have appointed heir of all things. Right. By whom also he made the worlds. Plural. So you got different meanings of the word world. You got different worlds. You got the sea world. You got the foul world. You got the, uh, the world of the lions, the world of the zebras, the world. You know what I'm saying? There's worlds within the entire world. And the particular world we set up for salvation is the world of Israel. Yeah, Isaiah 45 and 17. Y'all can be quiet for a minute. Isaiah 45, 17. Yes, he is. This is Isaiah 45, 17, verse 17. It says, But Israel shall be saved in the Lord, Yahweh Shemal Shah. 
with the everlasting salvation, ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. World without end. World without end. World without end. All right. What salvation? What salvation? Salvation being delivered, man. Yeah, go deeper than that, though. Delivered from sin, from wickedness, fornication, salvation. Delivered from sin, right? right? So, deeper than that, <laughs> right? What's 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 the wages of sin? Yeah. Yeah. So, sal salvation is deliverance from death. Salvation is victory over death. World without end. Sal see what I'm saying? Salvation is victory over death. We, we, me and the brothers were doing a live last night. First Corinthians 15. Go to First Corinthians. Uh, yeah, go to First Corinthians 15. Yahweh Shah made that possible. Yahweh Shah made victory over death possible for us. Right. <laughs> Go ahead. This first Corinthians chapter 15, starting at verse 53. Now, uh, first Corinthians 15 and 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the most high. Go ahead. Neither do a corruption. Inherit in corruption. Right, so we gotta be changed to corrupt vessels. Right? Go ahead. That's right, it's a lot. Yeah. Slip of the tongue. You gotta be changed into incorrupt vessels. Right? Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. This is the covenant and promises that our people were strangers from knowing. Like they this was hid from them. They, they don't understand the reward for accepting your inheritance and breaking your inheritance and turning back to the righteous will of your heart. Father, I'm sorry, they didn't understand that. Going right. the kingdom of heaven. Going the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Because we got, hey, Israel got an inheritance that none of these other nations, you know, they can even compare to. Man. Like we saw even right now, you know, he in this kingdom. This ain't shit. Compared to what the Lord got for us, bro, hey, these nations, hey, like the scriptures say, they like spittle, man. This ain't, this ain't nothing. Yeah, because this is the kingdom of death. Yeah. Ultimately, what you're giving up to get life, that's why the Lord said his laws are not, his, his ways are not grievous. Yeah. All he asking you to do is to give up death right. give to, up to, to, to get eternal life. Yeah. Give up death. What? Death. Yeah. Lobster. Death. Yeah. Adultery. Yeah. Death. Get that shit up. First Corinthians 15 and 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. This mortal, meaning the Israelite mortal man today, must put on immortality. World without end. Right? That's who God loves. Okay? But you gotta put it on in the spirit first. The Lord ain't gonna let you put on this immortal suit. Right? He's not gonna let you, like, cause basically, this body is a suit. Like on men in black, in every suit. This, the, this, I, I call this, this the Esau suit. Right? This this, this this the body that we gotta uh this the body that we gotta walk around in while we in Esau Edo King. You know? This motherfucker wanna do everything that's wicked. Right. You gotta put this restraints on this motherfucker like that. Damn nigga, stop looking at that woman. Yeah her ass out, but she what I mean. Right. It's have some restraint, nigga. Right. You know? Go ahead. First Corinthians 15 and 54. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, 
where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Right, so what is salvation? Victory over death. Go ahead. But thanks be to the Most High, which giveth us the victory. That's what salvation is. He's given us victory over death. You know? Through our Lord, Yahweh Shah. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. What? Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Serving the work of the Lord. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Right. So you got to put your hands on something. Right. You got to get involved. Go ahead, bro. Oh, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Is it some more on yeah, that verse? Is some more on that verse? Yeah. Go ahead. For as much as ye you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Go back, bro. 
Yep. It says, uh, Rock 19 and 19, the knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life, and they that do the things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. That's the kingdom of heaven, right? But you got to do the things that please the heart by seeing your heart shot in order to get it. You got to read the next verse. It says, the fear of the Lord is our wisdom, and in our wisdom is the performance of the law. Yeah. 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 He, he cut their heads. He said, do what they say, not what they do. They, 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 was, they were saying all the right stuff, but they weren't doing it. Yep. <laughs> hey, 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 it's the daytime. Hey, y'all, what's up, man? What's up, man? Y'all, 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 Cause they were, they really were trying to, you know, sneak this and, yep. you know what I'm saying? Try to catch him up, get him to say something, you know. And today they say Captain. 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 Yeah. Captain. yeah. <laughs> trying to see y'all shot Captain. Say, no, y'all need the ones. Captain, watch this. Yeah. Yep. Go ahead. It says, and the knowledge of his omnipotence. Yeah. The knowledge of his limitless power. Yeah. You know, that's why I always say what I say. According uh, pertaining to the law, you know we know that 613 laws, statutes, and commandments. You know when you go into the law, that's the total number of laws, statutes, and commandments. But hey, hey, the laws of life and righteousness is immortal. Like that's just a foundation piece. Like this is just a foundation. You know what I'm saying? Because niggas always gonna find a gray area. Yeah. You know. Like niggas, oh, they don't say you can't smoke weed in the Bible. Right. It, it is know, a herb, brother. It is an herb, brother. You know? Right. You know? Right. But the law, matter of fact, keep that. The law is spiritual. Yeah. Why you say righteousness is doing forever? Righteousness is the laws of the Hall of Hashem Yahweh Shah. Righteousness is immortal. Righteousness is the laws of your Hall of Hashem Yahweh Shah. So you think it's going to stop at 613? That's wrong with 71. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's just like in today's society, you know, they keep adding laws to the Constitution. Yeah. You know, yeah. a lot of the bullshit. They'll take some good out, put some bad in. Yeah. You know, it ain't it ain't got no true balance. You know, but they'll try to add another law to uh, like cancel out another. It's like you know. Yeah, that shit contradicted, you know, technicality, you know, you got technicality, overweight, but in the kingdom it ain't going to be like that, like the laws that we got that we know now, which we can't keep 100%, because we ain't out here preaching the law, we preaching the spirit, but it was just the fact that the Pharisees, they knew the laws, you know, they, they, they was masters of the law, especially the Apostle Paul, okay? And they didn't have the spirit, because, hey, the spirit of the law is more important than the law itself. That's why Yahweh shot when they were trying to catch him up on the Sabbath. Is it lawful? Is it lawful that we should work on the Sabbath? It's like, nigga, this man, this, 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 this man hurt. Think sick. You, you, you getting on me about doing something righteous? The law is about righteousness, nigga. Right. The law wasn't made for you to say, oh, this nigga ain't keeping the law. Right. This nigga ain't nothing. Where your fringe, Where your fringe is at? <laughs> oh, they weren't made for that. They weren't made for you to get the hook on somebody that's not keeping the law and you keeping the law. It was made for righteousness sake. I said, the Lord say, oh, he said, I don't want to, I don't want to get it twisted how he said it. He said, the Sabbath was made for man. 
Man wasn't made for the Sabbath. You gonna leave? You gonna you gonna you gonna let you gonna let your good ox die, your good cattle die, because it's the sad thing. You know, it's a storm, a tornado coming on the sad. You ain't gonna hurt him, you ain't gonna damn. You ain't, you ain't got four hundred. You know what I'm saying? Damn, you won't. I can't work. <laughs> what? Come on, man. You know, your brother sick. Call you say, man, damn, bro. I can't even make it to the house right now, bro. I'm pulled over the side of the road. Damn. You know what I'm saying, bro? I just need to come and get me. Yeah. That's the saddest, bro. Let's wait till the sun go down. Right. Yeah. 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 Sleep in the car. Sleep in the car. Yeah. Let the wind down. Get on earth. Seven. 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 Seven, brother. I can But then on the, on the other hand, you got niggas teaching you they have sex on the Sabbath. Woo. But it's Friday the Saturday. Every, 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 every weekend. Every weekend. You can't have no sex. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why they break it. That's why they break it. Yeah. See, they doctors contradicting. You know what I'm saying? It's like, damn. And you know how these niggas is. You know, they got to get the rocks off. So they like, nah, 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 man. We can have sex on the Sabbath. Right. You know? It's a Sabbath, it's your day. Yeah, Sabbath, it's your day. For you. Both be rested, man. Both be rested, man. Both be rested, man. Right. So you gotta, you know, you gotta understand the spirit of the law. Go ahead, bro. This is he, this is Romans chapter 7, starting at 14. But we know that the law is spirit. Verse 1 about something, verse 1, eh? Uh, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This Romans chapter 7, verse 1. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. How did the law have dominion over a man as long as he lived? Right, Jump down to 14. 
their everlasting glory, man. When you have a shot, being a part of that, man. That's much better than, you know, having to come in the kingdom. Hey, first and foremost, having to go through their judgment. And, and then you gotta come back in the kingdom. <laughs> Even the Lord ain't yeah, playing with yeah. niggas. The Lord, any nigga that died before the thermonuclear missiles turn America to a lake of fire, guess how your ass gonna wake up? <laughs> Don't yeah. wake your ass up in that bitch. In the fire. Oh, shit. shit. Yeah. <laughs> right back in it. Damn. Timeless. Timeless. That's what, that's what eternal fire means. Timeless, man. That's cold, too. That's hella good. That's Lord, Lord uh, put forth judgment on you and then Bring your ass back to get hit by the noose to get, to get in there and turn the fire, man. Come on. You, you, you should want to have no part in fire. But goddamn, to, 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 to go to sleep and wake back up. Yeah. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Because think about it. That's why I, uh, I never forget that the bishop, you know, Elder Tosin down at Atlanta. Man, he said when Jake, uh, when Jake, take part in this second death. When you reading in Isaiah 66, they talk about his rebuke the flames of fire. Right. It's like, imagine now, you are, you're in the spiritual realm. Right. So the scriptures tell you there, even the wicked, yeah, see some trouble, right? right? So you in a state of peace. Yeah. <laughs> you're in a state of peace. So now when he wake your ass back up during the second death, you in, you in fire and brimstone. You, 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 think, you, don't, you don't think it's gonna be words rebuking your ass? Like, you're gonna be rebuking your damn self. But it really ain't gonna be you, it's gonna be the spirit of the Lord. Cause you won't hear the voice of the prophets. But you're gonna hear the voice of the prophets in your own voice. <laughs> Stupid motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you're gonna be getting the puke, man. The flames gonna be sticking to your ass. <laughs> you know how you know how uh, you, you get your ass whooped? It'd be cool you get that ass whooped, you just get you don't really feel like whooping you, but you also got to do it. <laughs> it's just go ahead. They don't be talking to a woman that you ain't get talked to. You like yeah, them like that. You ain't like them, but you didn't like them. Yeah, you rather have those to the one with them licks come with a conversation. Yeah. I tell your ass, stop yeah. it. I told your ass, yeah. you ain't gonna listen, huh? Yeah. You just ain't gonna listen. Yeah. Turn on. Turn on. Don't run. Don't run. I'm sorry, I hate you. Y'all don't worry if you just said I was getting licked, but I'm worried. Then I yeah, yeah. Oh, I Woo! Yeah, I'm telling you, every word was to me. Woo! So, so, so every, every minute you in that flame, you're going to be hearing the rebuke of the Lord, man. Meanwhile, the Lord getting busy. You know what I'm saying? The angels, the Lord, getting, they getting busy. The niggas constantly going in the fire for being weak. I don't want no parts of that, man. Yeah, go ahead, This is Mark 11, I started 25. He says, in the day of prosperity, there is a forgiveness of afflictions. And we always talk about uh, the, 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 the nigga that got burnt up in the fire in Jackson. Oh, what, what, what he was saying? Yeah, I can't. I can't. <laughs> I can't. Hey, in the elect, we're going to be in the chariots. Like I say, we're going to be looking through that sea of glass. Seeing niggas burn up in the fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Niggas tell I help me. I told you, dog. I told you. And that's the thing. That's gonna be a part of the voice they're gonna be hearing too. Because all the people that we witness to, that you know, we know, we seen, and they, you know, uh publicly rejected or you know, we know for a fact that nigga just 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 proof. We gonna see, Lord willing, we are the let. We're gonna see them get that, that judgment. And when we see them, you're like, I'm trying to tell that nigga. But guess what? You are the elect now. You are, you in that new body now. He can hear you. He can hear you. I tell you. Who is it? Who is Jackie Chan? 
I told you, you go this way, I go this way. This cake is Mark 11 25. In the day of prosperity, there is a forgiveness of affliction. And in the day of affliction, there is no remembrance of prosperity.
know, he disciplines you in his word and you start to grow. But like the wisdom is gonna try you and uh, like I said, it's gonna first it's gonna walk with you by crooked ways. Yep. You know? What you got, bro? Uh, wisdom of Solomon 6 and 18. And love is keeping of her laws and the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. And incorruption maketh us near until the most high. All right, so this place is very far. America is, is, is way going in uh, complete opposition the opposite direction of your all watching our shop. Yeah. And, and, and it's going a thousand miles per hour in the wrong direction. Right. You know? So we we see how the most high wants us to move through reading and, 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 and toiling in these scriptures. Like right. this is the way that we need to move to get yeah. here to the most high. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and wisdom is righteous judgment. That's what wisdom means. It says, verse 20, Therefore the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. If your delight be in thrones and scepters, O ye kings of the people, honor wisdom. And that's essentially like the Pharisees were. They were like the nobles, or like the aristocrats, the aristocrats of the people. But they weren't honoring like they knew it, but they weren't honoring it. God, yep, it says, it says, honor wisdom that you may reign forevermore. Yep. That's the point. And they were trying to uh they were trying to go about <coughs> maintaining their social status the corner way. You know? Because they thought that they they kind of like had this mindset <coughs> that the, 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 the kingdom was gonna be within the confines of the Romans. Because that's how the Romans done. They had all these different provinces. They had all these different uh, vassal states, right? So they were setting up kings uh, under Caesar. Like Caesar was, like you had Claudius, you had uh, Octavius, you know, you had Nero. Those were the Caesars over the whole Roman uh, Empire. But then you had motherfuckers like Herod. He was the king of Judea. So which that was where the Pharisees' interest was, was being the next king of Judea. Because remember, Herod was posing as a fucking Israelite. But he was a fucking terrorist. So they were trying to, you know, they were really small-minded. Like, motherfucker, we don't want a peace. We want the whole thing. You know? Yeah, yeah we want Jerusalem. But the Lord said the whole world was made for our sakes. This is where the, this is where the uh, headquarters of the earth is right here. This is just where, you know, but we want, we want everything. We, when, we, when we step on the scene, we're supposed to be like Caesar. Yeah. You got to get tribute, like, you know, because all them other uh, vassal states had to pay tribute to Rome. They wanted to be, you know, under Rome and shit with the, you know, but, Go, go level. Go level. And they went honoring wisdom. Y'all got it. Yeah, hey, a brother get Luke 22. Get Luke 22 and 28. It's more on that Luke. It's more on that Luke 17. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta keep going on that Luke 17. This is Luke 22. Yeah, go to Luke 17 first. All right, all right. This is Luke 17. Picking up at 22 again. No, 21. It says, Neither shall they say, Go here or no there, for behold, the kingdom of the Most High will be you. Verse 22. And he said unto his disciples, The days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man. And he should not see it. Why? Because hey, he has to be crucified. It says, and they should say to you, see here or see there, and go not after them, nor follow them. For as the lightning, and it lighteth out of the one part of under heaven, 
shining unto the other part of the heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. Right, because he tells us that the Lord, we're going to sing Peter, the day of the Lord is going to be as a thief of the night. Right? So, it's going to catch the majority of the people in the world are not looking for the coming of the day of our Lord. And amongst the ones that are, only a remnant of them are looking for the day of the Lord uh, in righteousness, committing to the works, diligently seeking after the Lord. The other motherfuckers just in observation mode. My soul can't wait till the Lord get here. But where are you going? Because the work is what's actually making time speed up for the Lord to come. You know? You're not doing the work, that means you settle on your knees. You know? So that when you know, like uh you be on a job when you don't really got shit to do, you just try to find something to do, time be fucking dragging. But when you be on a job and you on you know you got a production rate of work, like shit, you got something constant moving, the time goes out like that. So you you, you prolong in the kingdom sitting back watching. Go ahead, bro. It's Luke 17 and 24. For as the lightning that light up out of the one part of the heaven, side up unto the other part of the heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. Yep. And it was And this thing and the Lord say, uh, uh this generation shall not pass away. Meaning that generation that was living back then. It's going to be on the scene when the Lord comes back. Those spirits are going to be regenerated, right? So we know we're in that time because this is this is a mirror image. America is a mirror image of the Roman Empire. Go ahead, bro. Verse 25, but first he must suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. And as it was in the day of Noah, so shall it be as in the days of the Son of Man. Right. You know, especially when it's like, Imagine if it just start raining right now. It, it, I think it was a very slight chance of rain today, but it ain't rain today. But just imagine, like right now, you look up in the sky, like, it don't look like no rain coming. But then all of a sudden, the rain drop hits you in the head. That ain't too mysterious to us. Because we've seen rain before. But just imagine in the days of Noah, you know what I'm saying? That first rain drop just fell out of the sky. And you know what I'm saying? Like, what the hell that's gonna be how that first missile. Then, then you just see constant coming, raining missiles raining down. You know. <laughs> then, then after all, after all of that, this big father ship chariot just what the fuck? Like lightning. Like lightning. You know. That's just like a lightning strike thunder. If a thunder clap and lightning strike right now, you're like, oh, where that, where that come from? You know? That's how the Lord is going to come. And for all those who are not diligently seeking him, it's going to be amplified that much more. Like a thief in the night. You know, you sleeping good. You know, in a good night's sleep, you had just a guy young. You know what I'm saying? At the set, you got your, you know, you got your rocks off. Yeah. Shit, you drooling. Yeah. Next thing you know, boom! Somebody kicked in the door. Like, what the fuck? You know? That's how the Lord gonna destroy this kingdom. He's gonna kick in the door. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. This is Luke 17 and 26 now. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. You know how they got the FAA guidelines and shit. You know what I'm saying? You got no fly zones and you know you gotta get clearance before you just take out flying and shit. The Lord just gonna break through the door. Like, yeah, I'm here. You know? Hey, you getting the clearance? Yeah. 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 I got the most high clearance. Yeah. You might be the prince of the power of the earth, but I got the king of the earth. Right. Told me to come on through and shut this shit down. Right. <laughs> 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 Fuck y'all been doing. <laughs> 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 Fuck y'all been doing.
And they use tonic, they use a tonic bomb to ignite the uh, nuclear bombs, if I'm not mistaken. Right? So it's still a part of the process. You know? uh, nuclear, nuclear power ain't nothing but atomic power evolved. You know? You got it, bro. Bomb to Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So imagine what the nuclear bomb is going to be. Yeah. Because I was reading, they use, they actually use an atomic bomb to ignite the, uh, it's like a bomb within a bomb. You can see it right there. Yeah. Yeah. And you know that shit, you know, if you use an atomic bomb to ignite a nuclear bomb, you know that nuclear bomb ain't nothing to play with. Yeah. You know? No, that's why Esau say, hey, if, if it's a World War, what do you say, four? Who was that saying that shit? A World War Four. A World War Four. She was fighting with sticks and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was fighting with sticks and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was fighting with sticks and stuff. Yeah. 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 Go ahead, you're not right getting in. This is back in Luke 17 and 29. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Yep. Woo. Let's set your feet on fire. When the Lord says, uh, I come back to send fire on earth, what if not it already be killed him, man? Yep. So the Lord ain't come to play. And it says in verse 31, In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop, and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Right, because whatever going on, whatever you're doing, you can drop it. Hey, you can drop all your things you had planned to do for that day. Because you ain't doing shit. <laughs> Whatever you doing right then, hey, that's gonna be the last thing you do, right? That's why we want to be prophesying of praising the Lord. Or, hey, worst case scenario, we still abiding in the truth. You don't want to be in the world out here, body gagging around, swallowed up in Babylon, with the congregation of the dead. Man, I'm putting put the fly down. Put the fly down. Oh, oh, good. Took the stomach out, man. Yeah. 
Did you what you guys said you were going to get low back sports in? It's Acts chapter 14, verse 22. It says, confirming the souls of the disciples. Uh, going up. Uh, 20. 19. 19. It's Acts 14 and 19. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city. And the next day, he departed with Barnabas to Derby. All right, he got stoned. He got, he got yeah, stoned out of the city. Showing you the type of temptation you're going to face when you come into this truth. All right? You're going to be persecuted for the name of the Lord. Right? You're going to be persecuted for the reputation of the Lord, for righteousness. So we can be looking forward to us getting stoned, spit on, you know what I'm saying, chased off the, off the corners, shot at. Look forward to that. Be prepared in your mind and your faith builds up for that day. You know? Go ahead, bro. Acts 14 and 21. And when they had preached the gospel to that city, and they have taught many, they returned again to Lysha. They went back. Then they went back. Go ahead. And to Icardium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhort them to continue in so the faith. So here it is, you done got stoned out of the city. Hey, coming back. See, look, Lord kept me. And see, that's what the type of power is going to be shown in us. Right? Uh, get that by demonstration of power. The Lord is going to show put on a demonstration of, 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 of power through his elect. He's going to show power through his elect. Right? After we go through the different persecutions and the tribulations, we still going to stand, Lord willing. If you are the elect, you still going to be standing. That's going to make even more people, like, in the final hour, see, like, damn, those men still out there doing it. They still, they still holding me down. They got locked up through a jail last week. Well, just about the video. He, 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 he talking about he just made fun. Yeah, just made fun. Follow all your hard boxing house. <laughs> First day out. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Go ahead, bro. Acts 14 and 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of the Most High. Yeah. But through that tribulation, the Lord is going to put on a demonstration of power. You got it, bro. It's 1 Corinthians 2, it in verse 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Right. And that's how we speak and that's how we move. Right? According to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is going to uh, give us the ability to move in these malicious times, specifically Jacob's trouble, right? With a certain amount of power, right? Wisdom is the beginning of that power. Isaiah 33 and 6, let's say, Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time and strength of thy salvation. That's the point. Yeah, yeah, you want to go Verse 5, it says that your faith to now stand in the wisdom of men, right. but in the power of Yahweh Bashi and Yahweh Shai. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, Lord will, you were edified. We're going to close out again, turn it towards the east. I'm going to destroy the fusion, Shalom. Shalom.